Here's another amazing meal that will impress your friends and family over the holidays. Oven roasted pork or baked pork shoulder, yellow rice and peas, and fried plantain. If you're interested in seeing how this meal came together, let's start cooking. This pork shoulder has been soaking in water for about two hours. Uh, vinegar and water, about one and a half cups of vinegar. The next thing I'll do is to scrape it with a knife, just to remove any hairs or any gunk on the skin. You can also soak it with lime juice or lemon juice. Use cold water. Now that your pork shoulder is nice and clean, you'll make, using your sharpest knife, make crisscross patterns, cross hatch, I think they call it, but not too deep because we'll be removing the skin after. Next, I'll remove the skin and the first layer of fat using a very sharp knife just go um, over the meat and under the fat just pull and cut if this is too difficult for you you can leave it on or have your butcher do it but they said this is the best way to get the crispy skin so we'll do what we need to do. And this is why you didn't want to go too deep as well on the skin. And that's it. Now I'll wash my hands and we'll make the seasoning. You can make the seasoning rub in advance so you'll be ready to seasoning once you finish this step. The next step is to make holes in the meat, in the shoulder. I'm just going to stab it, making little incisions. To make the seasoning rub, I'm using Cuban oregano, what we refer to as pudina in Trinidad. This is oregano, that's fresh oregano. This is fresh oregano that I just picked from the planter in my back porch. Those ingredients are optional. Dried oregano. I have four tablespoons, about four teaspoons of salt, one tablespoon of my homemade adobo, which is a blend of oregano, black pepper, and salt, and turmeric. One tablespoon of cumin. This is the dark roasted cumin. I have about three tablespoons of minced garlic, and this is fresh garlic that I minced uh, a couple of days ago. One tablespoon of black pepper, half an onion. This is a large Vidalia onion. This is half of it, one hot pepper. So I'll put all the fresh ingredients, the pudina, the onion, the pepper, and the oregano in the mini food processor. And instead of this, you can use fresh green seasoning if you have either or and or in goes the onion i chopped it so that it doesn't break the food processor add hot pepper to taste i'm not making this very spicy because i recently made a jerk chicken for the husband and it was too spicy so he will probably divorce me if i make this spicy so i'll pulse to puree it Scrape down the sides. You can also put this in a blender with a very little bit of oil or water. And if your garlic wasn't minced, you'd add the garlic in here too. It smells very aromatic and herbaceous. Use whatever herbs you like, make it your own. Don't waste any of that seasoning, whatever you do. Next, I'll mix the other ingredients in. The salt, dried oregano, black pepper, 
adobo. If you don't have adobo, just use like a half teaspoon of uh, turmeric or you could eliminate it. The minced garlic. Use a lot of garlic or as little as you like. More garlic is more flavor. All right, so I'm just going to mix it in. I'm going to add some olive oil. One, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of vinegar or lemon juice. Maybe three. Add in some green seasoning if you wish. I just made some, so I'll use it. And we'll mix well to combine. Next, we'll season the pork shoulder. Uh, we have to wait a moment. Leo is having a long distance fight with the neighbor's dog. Leo! Leo! L Leo! Leo! One moment, please. Next, I'll just rub it into the pork. I've been waiting for 10 minutes and he's not stopping, so the show must go on. We'll just rub it in. Get it into the incisions, just like that. Stick your finger in there. Make the holes bigger if you have to. repeat and I'll see you at the end. You will agree that this is properly seasoned. I'm going to marinate it for two days. The husband will be here in two days so it will be well marinated and I'll cook it when he's when he's on the day, and I'll cook it on the day he's getting here. Two to three days is perfect, but if you only have an hour or two, it'll still work fine. Place it in one of those turkey bags or um, baking bags. And turn it every uh, couple of hours or so, or every half a day. Maximum flavor. It's going to be really delicious, I promise you. I found this like... Leo! What's going on, buddy? What's going on? What that doggy said? Okay, settle that now. Let's go. Come on. You want chicken? Let me give you chicken, okay? Be quiet. Good boy. Oh. I found this extra large Ziploc resealable bag. So I'll place the pork inside the bag and seal it up. Put it in the fridge. It will be perfect if you have two people to do this, but my buddy here is busy fighting. So I'll have to wipe the bag. <coughs> OMG. <coughs> Poor <coughs> excess marinade. It's a little bit. <coughs> Leonardo! Just pour it in. Seal it up, wash your hands, disinfect, clean, deodorize. I apologize for the noise. And I always place any seasoned meats or any meats that's marinating in a dish pan in case of any spillage. I don't want to clean a huge mess in the fridge. Especially sometimes if you put chicken, the bones pierce the bags and pierce the bag. The bone will pierce the bag and make a mess. So to prevent that, to prevent that, place it in a resealable bag inside of a dish pan.
If you're still with me with all that noise in the background, thank you. And here's an extra tip. If you don't eat pork or don't love pork, you can also use this marinade on a chicken. It will be absolutely delicious as well. The seasoned pork shola has been marinating for two days. Three days would have been better, but I need to cook for the husband. And in this roasting pan, I have some baby carrots, celery, scallion, garlic, bell pepper, hot pepper, and thyme. This is totally optional, but I just thought that it would perfume the uh, pork shoulder while it's roasting. And I'm not too sure we'll have any stock, but if any, it will be flavored with these um, veggies and herbs. I'll place the rack in. I'll remove this from the bag. Place it on the rack. Bring it to room temperature and we'll take about 30 minutes. And next I'll wipe any seasoning from the top of it. You don't want it to burn during the cooking process. It will be baking and roasting. They even put on the broiler just to get this uh, crispy on the top. We will try our best. Let me know below if you have any tips for a crispy skin. This is going to uh, air dry until it comes to room temperature. Then we'll sprinkle on some salt and place it in that hot oven. It's going to be delicious. Next, I'll sprinkle on some salt and rub it in. Not too much to make it salty, but enough to get that crisp skin. Just sprinkling some of my homemade adobo. That's it. Once the uh, oven comes to temperature and once this is room temperature, I will place it in the oven. Remember the oven is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And this pork shoulder is about nine pounds and we will cook it for 30 minutes per pound. To calculate how many hours, we say it's nine pounds or the amount of pounds your meat is times 30 is 270 divided by 60. The 60 minutes is in one hour. And I will be baking this for four and a half hours and then I will broil the top. I'll raise the temperature, but for now, we'll put it in for four and a half hours. I'll also pour two and a half cups of water in the bottom so that it doesn't burn. We'll keep filling it if the water evaporates totally. Place it in the oven and set the timer according to the amount of pounds it has. Timer for four hours and 30 minutes, starting now. While the pork is in the oven, I'll make a quick rice and peas. I'm going to use dried pigeon peas. I also have coconut milk, the leftover seasoning, some minced garlic, my homemade adobo, and some tomato sauce. So let's start. Turn on the stove and I'll place it over high heat for the pot to come to temperature. And here I also have two baby carrots chopped, a half an onion, a Vidalia onion, one a tablespoon of the minced garlic and a baby hot pepper, which is optional. I'll add a couple of tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, about three or four. When the oil is hot, I'll add in the onion. And cook until the edge is brown. About three minutes. And while that's cooking, I'll open the can with the coconut milk. Oops. I'll pour it into the measuring cup. And that is about one and three quarter cups of coconut milk. Rinse the can. I'm using three cups of rice, so I'll need about three and three quarter cups of liquid. Next, I'll add the garlic. Reduce the heat to low. 
while you get yourself sorted. Let's see if it's on. I'll add two tablespoons of that delicious seasoning we made. We're bringing the flavors of the pork into the rice. Give it a stir. I'm gonna raise the heat to medium. I'll add a tablespoon of adobo. It contains turmeric, so it'll give it a lovely yellow color. It smells amazing. Next, I'll add in the tomato sauce. And this is an eight ounce can. Stir well to combine. Mm. Rinse the can a little bit. The heat is at medium. I'll add in the carrot. Just to help it to soften a little bit. I'm gonna cook this for a couple of minutes. While that's cooking, while that's cooking, rinse the pigeon peas. Next I'll add the rinse peas and a half of a green bell pepper I found in the fridge. Give it a good stir. Allow it to fry in all those delicious flavors and aromatics. We'll just do this for a minute or two. We're just developing flavors. Looks yummy and tastes yummy already. If you just wanted to make this a stew pigeon piece, just add some water and boil it down for about 15, 20 minutes. But we're gonna make it into a rice today. So let's add the rice. And this is three cups of washed jasmine rice. I have to start decreasing the amount that I cook because all the kids are going away to college and it will just be me and my husband and this is the last week they're all here so after today it might just be two cups of rice we'll give that a gentle stir the heat is still on medium it smells very aromatic and fragrant we have lovely ingredients in here the fresh green seasoning we made carrots, bell peppers, tomatoes. And if you wanted to use fresh tomatoes too, blend it up, that would have been, that would have been fine. Well, that will be fine. So I'm gonna cook this for one minute and then we'll add the coconut milk in. At this point, also feel free to taste and add salt if required. Remember the adobo will have salt as well as the seasoning we made. Add a pat of butter in here if you wish. Now I'll add the coconut milk in. Give it a stir to combine all those delicious flavors. Let anything dislodge from the bottom. And this is a medium non-stick pot we're using. I'm just gonna bring that to a boil. And when we start to see the rice grains on top, we will reduce the heat, move it to the smallest burner or the second smallest burner, cover and cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, taste for salt here and black pepper. Add if required. Mmm, tastes delicious. Starting the timer for 25 minutes. Now that the rice grains appear on the top. Leo, what are you doing here, Leo? I'm going to move it to the burner, to the back burner. And I'm going to cover. Turn on, put the heat on very low. 
and I'll cook for about 20 minutes. Make sure the pot is sealed properly. One thing I forgot to do, I forgot to add the thyme and the pepper just to perfume the rice. That's it. He's a lazy boy. He didn't do anything all morning. He didn't even eat his breakfast. The rice has been sitting for about 20 minutes because I was busy. Let's check on it now. Remove the thyme sprigs and we'll fluff. Smells absolutely delicious. It's still grainy, it's not mushy. And I'm sure the flavor is on point. Let's check. Just fluff with a fork and you're ready to eat. Absolutely delicious. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, really delicious. Mmm, yummy. Can't wait for the pork to be done. You're really going to enjoy this recipe. And so simple to make. The pork shola has been cooking for about four hours. I removed the top skin because it was fully cooked and crisp already. And that's the beauty of um, separating the skin from the meat and the advantage. And this will continue to cook for 30 minutes more and then we will remove it. You cook your pork shoulder as long as you wish for um, whatever texture you wish, but I don't want my pork to be too dry, so I will leave it for another 30 minutes and then I'll remove it. As you can see, the skin is very crispy. It's going to be very delicious. I look forward to chomping on that. Mmm, delicious. Let's finish up by making some fried plantain and get ready to eat. Peel, slice and salt plantain. And that's all there is to eat, my sweet friends. I hope you've enjoyed being in the kitchen with me today and learned something new. If you have, please like, share, leave a lovely comment below and subscribe if you wish to see more. Hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss a thing. Until next time, stay safe, be well, cook, share and love. Bye-bye.